Hello and welcome to this demo. In this demo, we're going to look at deploying our application on Google Container Engine or Kubernetes Engine on Google Cloud Platform. We will first uh, start with setting up our Google uh, Container Engine platform and then we will proceed with creating the uh, service definition files for pods and services and then we will proceed with creating the pods themselves on Kubernetes and creating the services and we will try and access our application um, that's hosted on the Kubernetes cluster. So let's get started. Okay, so here I have uh, my Google Cloud console. I'm logged into my Google Cloud platform with a test account and, uh, and this is my dashboard. We will now look at uh, what Kubernetes Engine is. Uh, so if you look at the documentation page for uh, Kubernetes Engine, you can see that it's uh, a managed environment for deploying containerized applications on Google Cloud Platform. You can see its various features on this page. And um, so this is basically a pre-configured Kubernetes cluster that you can get on Google Cloud Platform with a single click. If you scroll down to the bottom, uh, you will see a link to a quick start. And um, if you go in here, you will see uh, basic information on how to get started with Kubernetes on Google Cloud Platform. So we're going to follow these instructions. So um, I'm logged into my Google uh, Cloud Platform console. And when I go into the menu on the left, I have Kubernetes Engine on the left. So I'm going to click on that. And this takes me to the Kubernetes uh, dashboard. So I do not have any cluster for now. So I'm going to click on create a cluster. And this brings up the form to create a cluster. So I'm going to give a name, um, example, voting app. Just going to add a description. Uh, it is a Kubernetes cluster to deploy our uh, example voting application. I will leave everything else uh, as is at the default and I'm going to click on create. So what this does is it basically creates a Kubernetes master node and three worker nodes and um, take me to, and that's going to take a few minutes to deploy. And once it's ready, uh, I will see a green check mark. Now um, I just clicked on the Google cloud shell in the top right corner. Um, what this is, is this gives me a temporary shell that I can work with. So it is in this shell that I'll be uh, running all my Kubernetes commands. Now it takes a few minutes for the uh, cluster to be set up. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to click on the connect button uh, on the example voting app uh, cluster and it gives me instructions on how to connect to my Kubernetes cluster. So um, in my Google Cloud shell, I could run this command uh, called, uh, which is gcloud container clusters get credentials. I could use, I could run the command to uh, get the credentials to connect to my Kubernetes cluster. And then once that command runs successfully, I will then be able to use the kubectl um, command line to, to interact with my Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to uh, copy the command and I will run it. I'm not sure if it's going to work because the uh, cluster has not uh, fully been set up yet. And yes, as you can see, it gives me a warning that states um, the cluster is uh, still not running. So I'm going to wait for the cluster to start up. And yes, um, as you can see, I now have a green check mark next to the example voting app. Uh, and that indicates that the cluster is fully set up. So I'm going to rerun the command again. And as you can see, it says the kubeconfig is configured correctly. I should now be able to run uh, kubectl commands on my Kubernetes cluster from this terminal. I'm going to run the kubectl get nodes command to get a list of nodes available in my cluster. As you can see, there are three nodes available and they're all in ready state. And I could run the kubectl get pods command to see a list of pods. And since I don't have, I haven't created any pods, I do not see any. And I could run the kubectl get services command to get a list of um, services. But as you can see, there's a well, there's one service already created, uh, and that's a default service created by Kubernetes. 
So we can leave that at that. So I now have my Kubernetes cluster ready on a Google Cloud Platform. I'm now going to create all the definition files for pods and services so that I can then use those files to create the pods and services I need on the Kubernetes cluster. So I have uh, opened an IDE on my laptop and I've created a folder called example voting app uh, cube and in this um, folder I'm going to create the different files needed. So first I'm going to start with a um, a pod definition file for my voting app. So I'm going to call it voting app pod.yaml. Okay, now in, in this file, I'm going to define my YAML uh, definition. I'm going to start with version as we discussed in the lecture. So I have API version, kind, metadata, and spec. So always remember these are the four major sections so i will always start by just putting all the four there and then i will go ahead and start filling in values for each of these uh, sections so i have all the four defined now i'm going to specify the version and that's going to be v1 uh, i then have the kind which is pod because uh, i'm now creating pods and my under metadata i'll always start with name so the name is going to be uh, voting app pod so that's that's the name of my pod and then I always have labels as you can imagine labels are used to tag the pods or resources that we create on kubernetes uh, this way uh, you can later search uh, these resources based on these labels so the labels are later used uh, with services to, enable, uh, to allow services to um, search and find out the respective pods. So I'm going to create a label named um, name. I'm going to give that a value of voting app pod. And then I'm going to uh, add a label called app and I'm going to call it demo voting app. So my application is demo voting app and the name of this pod is voting app pod. I'll use the same format of labels for all my pods and services. Okay, so the next is a spec, um, so spec uh, for specification. Since this is a pod, I'm going to have uh, containers inside it. So everything that comes under spec section uh, is dependent on the, tech, uh, the type of uh, definition you're creating. Um, uh, since this is a pod, I will have containers. Um, if I were to have, if I were creating a service, then I might have ports under it. So I'll start with containers, and um, under containers we provide an array of containers. So I create an array with a name uh, as voting app and the image that is used to um, deploy the container. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to Docker Hub and search for uh, Docker samples, and that's where I can find all the images for my voting application. And uh, there you can find the example voting app. Uh, what I need is the vote uh, app, app itself. So I'm going to copy the name for the example voting app image. And that's the image uh, that I want the pod to use. So I'm going to specify the name of the image under the image uh, um, section. And then finally, um, I need a, a port to be exposed. So I'm going to add a port section and, and under that I can provide a list of ports. Um, in this case, I'm just going to have one port. And I'm going to call that uh, and that's going to be 80. Okay, so now I have my voting app pod definition file ready. So if you look at it, uh, first I have the API version, which is v1. And then I have the kind set to pod. I have some basic metadata where I'm providing the name of the pod and some labels. And then I have specification under which um, I have containers. So since this is a pod, I have containers under specification. And uh, uh, we only have one container per pod, which is why I only have one um, image specification under containers. So the name is voting app. The image is the name of the image that I want the pod to use. And then uh, the image exposes port 80. So I'm going to add the port 80 under the port section. Okay, now I'm going to use the same file to create other pods. So I'm just going to copy the same file and um, dupl create a duplicate of that. And under that, I'm going to have worker. So worker app 
uh, I will now create a pod for worker. So for worker, everything remains the same. The API version is going to be v1. The kind is going to be pod. I'm going to change the name to worker. I'm also going to change the label to worker. And under specification, um, I'll change the name of the container to worker um, and the image as well. So we'll change the name to worker and I'm going to uh, change the name of the image. So I'll go back to the uh, Docker Hub. I'll find the, the worker image and then I'm going to copy the name of the image and place it there. Okay, so I have my worker uh, container. Now the worker does not expose any ports because it's not a web application. So I'm just going to remove the port section for the worker. Okay, I'm going to create a, another copy of the voting app and I will now create a pod for the result app. So I'm going to name it result-app-pod. Then again here everything remains the same except the name. So I'm going to change all the name to result. Uh, the name of the container also from voting to result. And then I'm going to go to Docker Hub and get the name of my uh, result image. Okay, and I'm going to replace the name of the image with the result app image name. And the result app exposes port 80 because it's a web application. So I'm going to leave the port section as it is. Okay, so I'm done with all the three application pods. Uh, I have two pods remaining, which are for Redis and uh, the uh, Postgres database. So I'm going to create a new file for Redis pod. Um, I could have just copied, but I'm just going to create a new file for the Redis pod. I will name it redis-pod.yaml and I will copy the contents from the voting app again. And this again, uh, it's all going to remain the same except for the names. So the name is going to be Redis. Instead of voting app, I'm going to rename that to Redis-pod. The label as well to Redis-pod and the name of the container to uh, Redis and the image name is going to be Redis. The port is now going to be 6379 because uh, that's the default port that Redis uh, exposes. Okay, so I have my Redis pod. I'm going to create a copy of that and I'm going to now create the Postgres database pod. And in the Postgres uh, pod, I'm going to first uh, rename all the names and labels to Postgres. And the name of the container will now be Postgres. And the name of the image is going to be Postgres with a tag of 9.4 because that's the version that the example voting app uses. And the container port is now going to be 5432 because that's the port that Postgres uses. Uh, listens to by default. Okay, so I now have all my five pods. Um, now the next step is to create services so that these pods, once deployed, can communicate with each other. So first I'm going to create the internal uh, services. So I'm going to create a new file. I will name the file Redis dash service dot yaml okay so again in this file i will define the base structure which is going to be api version kind metadata and spec the api version is going to be v1 the kind in this case is going to be service metadata is going to be going to have name which is going to be redis and labels under labels, I'm going to have name, which is going to be Redis uh, service. And the application is going to be demo voting app for all of the pods and services. The specification. Uh, so since this is a service, we're going to have ports under specification. Earlier, when we created a pod, we had containers under specification. Now we have a pod, a ports. So, um, what this says is uh, under ports, I'm going to uh, provide a list of ports. To start with, 
first it's going to be 6379 and I need to give a source port and target port so the source port is going to be 6379 and target port is going to be 6379 so what is it going to listen on where, where does it listen from so let's say we have five different pods running when we run the pods, uh, when we create the pods, we'll have five different containers running. We'll have the Postgres database, Redis, the voting applications, etc. Now, when we create this service, we're basically telling the service to listen on port 6379 and forward that to port 6379. But where exactly is it listening from and what exactly does it forward to? So we need to link this service to one of the pods that we created so that it knows to work with that particular docker container in that pod so how do we specify or link this service to a particular pod that we we have created for that we use selectors under the specification we create a section called selector so under the selector section we provide a list of filters so what do we filter on we filter by list of labels and this is why we labeled each of our pods with a different name for example if we go back to our redis pod we can see that under the labels it has a name and an app so if i'm if i copy that whole uh, section as is and paste it under the selector section when the service is created so it will link the service to a pod based on the filter that we have provided here so in this case it is going to link this service to the redis pod because it is the redis pod that has the label based on these filters okay so we have the redis service now we're going to create another service so i'm going to copy the redis service and create a postgres service And this is for the Postgres database. This is for exposing the Postgres database to the worker and the result app. So in this Postgres service file, we're going to rename the name of the service to DB because this is the name that our application listens on. So remember that the services should be named based on what the other application is looking for. Um, we know that the worker app tries to connect to a service on the host named DB. So the service should be named DB or whatever our applications are looking for. The label is going to be DB service. The port in this case is going to be 5432 because that's the port that the Postgres database listens on. And the selector in this case is going to be the selectors the labels we have defined for Postgres so I'm going to go back to the Postgres-pod.yaml file and I'm going to copy the um, labels under the Postgres pod I will put that labels under the selector section so this enables the pod serve uh, the Postgres service when it is created it will link the Postgres service to the pod uh, that it can retrieve based on these filters we have provided here okay so the next step is to create a load balancer uh, or external service so that our users can access our application so what we're going to do is we're going to copy the redis service and we're going to create a new service and we will call that uh, the voting app uh, service because this is going to this service is going to expose the voting app to the external world through a load balancer so uh, we're going to modify the name to voting service we will change the labels to voting service um, the port is going to be 80 because that's the port that the container exposes and we will need to change the selector uh, to link the service to the voting app by copying the labels from the voting app and putting them under the selector section okay now we have our uh, voting service ready but like the redis and the postgres uh, services these are, are this is not an internal service so by default the services are created with a type called cluster ip 
The services created with cluster IP type are only available within the cluster. To enable uh, the service to be accessible outside the cluster, we must change the type of the service to something else. So in this case, we're going to change the type of service to load balancer. Okay, so we are ready with our voting app service. Similarly, another service that we want to expose outside is the result app. So we'll create a copy of the voting app service and we'll create a result app. And in the result app, we're going to rename the service from voting to result. Uh, similarly, we're going to relabel the service from voting to result. But remember, for these services, the labels doesn't really make sense. So you really don't need to have these labels for these services because we are not querying these services um, from any other resource uh, or selecting these services from any other resource. So it doesn't really matter, but it's a good practice to label the services appropriately. <clears throat> uh, the type is going to be load balancer, the ports are going to be 8080, but the selector in this case is going to be the selector for the result app. So I'm going to copy the labels from the result app and I'm going to put it under the selector section uh, for this service. Okay, so I now have the service ready for the result app. So I now have five pods and four services. Uh, out of the four services, two of them are for Redis and Postgres database, so they are internal service, and I have two services for the external um, users, which are for the voting app and the result services. So I'm all set with um, my definition files, and now all I need to do is go to the Kubernetes cluster and deploy the services. Now, what I'm going to do is to, um, in order to copy these files over, I'm going to check in these files into my GitHub account. I have created a new repository on my GitHub account, and I've uh, uploaded uh, all these files into, these, uh, into this account. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to copy this, um, the link to this GitHub repository, and on my Kubernetes um, cluster, I'm first going to clone the repository so that I can get all the files on there. Okay, I'm now going to clone the repository using the git clone command. Okay, so that's completed. I should now have a new folder named Kubernetes example voting app. And that's there. So I'm going to go into the Kubernetes example voting app and I can see all the files that I just created. Great. So now I'm going to go ahead and create these uh, pods and services one by one. I will start with the uh, voting app. So what I want to do first is uh, I just want to start simple. So I'm going to deploy the uh, example voting app, the voting piece of it alone, and um, I will create the service and I will just try to access that voting app alone first just to make sure that I'm able to uh, deploy that and um, access that from a browser. So I will use the kubectl create command um, dash f and then what I'm going to start with is the voting app pod. Okay, so I'm going to uh, give the name of the uh, pod definition file and that is going to be voting app pod. Okay, great. So I see the message that uh, pod voting app pod is created. And I will just wait for it to run. So if I do a kubectl get pods command, I can see that it's running. So if you look at the ready state, it's one uh, slash one. That means that one of one containers is running. And that's that's good. Next, um, to be able to access this voting uh, service uh, from a browser, I need an external uh, service to be created so that I can access it. So I'm now going to create the service for the voting app uh, service. So that's going to be kubectl create dash f voting app service dot yaml. Okay, so I've got the message that says service uh, is created. I could now list the services using the kubectl get uh, services command. 
Okay, so if you look at the uh, output of that, it says there's a voting service that is being created and the, the status is uh, pending. So it's currently deploying the load balancer. So if I go to the discovery and load balancing section in the UI, I can actually see that the voting service is in the process of creating a load balancer service. So I'll just have to wait and give it a few minutes for it to deploy the uh, load balancer service. The load balancer service only works on public cloud platforms um, such as Google Cloud and um, AWS. So this is in fact relying on the Google Cloud uh, load balancer. When I click on refresh, it's refreshed the status and now it's, it's okay. I can now see the external IP address. So if I simply uh, take the external IP address and go to a browser, I should now be able to see uh, my application. Or in the UI um, above, you have a link uh, that will take you directly to our application. So when I click on that, I can now see the cats versus dogs uh, interface and my voting app, the first piece of my, or the first component of our application is up and running and um, the load balancer has been configured successfully. So that's great. Next, um, I will proceed with the remaining components. So I will first uh, create the Redis pod because uh, my voting app is dependent on the Redis uh, pod. I will use the command kubectl create-f and redispod.yaml. Okay, so the Redis pod is created. If I do a kubectl get pods command, I can see that it's already running. So that's good. And now I will create the Redis service so that my Redis pod is um, available to my other uh, pods. So I will do a kubectl create-f redis-service.yaml and that creates the Redis service. If I do a kubectl uh, get services, I should now see a new service created. But if you look at the type, it says cluster IP and that indicates that it's an internal service. Okay, so at this point, I have the first uh, few components deployed. I will now proceed with the Postgres database. So I will create the Postgres database uh, pod. So I will run the kubectl create-f postgres-db-pod.yaml. And I get the message back saying the pod has been created. If I run a kubectl get pods command, I can see that it's in the process of creating the container. So that'll take, uh, that may take a few minutes depending on the size of the image, etc. But I really don't have to wait um, for creating the service. So I could go ahead and create uh, the service for the Postgres database. So I'm going to do a kubectl create-f postgres-service and this will create my Postgres service. This service will enable uh, the other component to access my Postgres database. So if I run the kubectl get services command, I can now see that I have the DB and it's of type cluster IP. And next I will deploy the uh, worker app. So I will run the kubectl create-f or worker pod. I will run the kubectl get pods command to see that the worker app pod uh, creation is in progress. Now, I don't have any services for that because um, no other components are actually relying on the worker um, pod. I'm now going to create the uh, result uh, app pod. So I will cr run the kubectl create command and provide the result um, app pod definition file. Okay, so the uh, result app pod definition file has been created. Um, I will also create the result app service for making the result app available externally. So I will run the kubectl create-f result app service.yaml command. So I have all of my pods running and I have all of my services up and running. Um, the result service 
is still pending as it's uh, busy creating the uh, load balancer. So I'm going to go into the UI and uh, refresh. Um, and as you can see, the load balancer service configuration for result service is in progress. So I'm going to wait for it to be available. Okay, so it's ready. And um, when I click on the uh, load balancer IP, I can see that it's up and running. And if I now go and cast my vote, I can see the result uh, being updated um, instantly. So this um, confirms that our application and is working and all um, and it's all integrated with each other using using services. Okay, so um, that's the end of the demo. We have successfully created a cluster on uh, a Kubernetes cluster on Google Cloud Platform. We have created the files required to create pods and services oh, and we have hosted our application on the Kubernetes uh, cluster on Google Cloud Platform. That's a simple and very basic demo. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next lecture.